Good morning, afternoon, evening or night, whenever you're watching this, welcome. The brook is babbling, the birds are joyfully singing, tree leaves are busily budding, and the sky is as grey and forbidding and as dreek as a winter's day. I'm expecting the clouds to shuffle off elsewhere before long, and the sun, I think, will make an appearance. I'm going to wade up this stream to an old dump site, but I think bottle diggers might have been digging over the winter, so let's see what old and interesting things I can find. even on the fifth visit to it because in this area the hills are steep, the bottle diggers are messy and dug things often find their way into the river days, weeks, months after first dug. And of course, who doesn't love wading in beautiful places surrounded by nature? Glass and pottery fragments are how I found this site. I followed them upstream. The pieces got bigger and the breaks sharper, less river worn, and eventually I started finding intact bottles and jars, and soon after found the site. That was 18 months ago now. I'm filming this in April 2022. It was a very good day 18 months ago finding a new old dump site to explore and a revisit. Can it ever be as good? I hope so. Signs of scraping. Could be a dog, could be a mudlarker. This beach is regularly visited by both. Whether a site will be good for a visit or not depends on the weather and how many other people know the site and visit. I've told a few people where it is, but most of them don't live local. And the one that does live local, I'm happy if she finds good things there. And if I don't find good things today, then... That's less editing to do. Oh, looks like footprints. Might mean someone else has waded upstream from the beach, which could be playing, could be exploring, might not have gone as far as the dump site, or might have done. It's a good thing I've got another dump site in mind to visit today, if this one is played out. first intact looking bottle today, and it's not one I found in the wild before, looks very much like a bottle from a chemistry lab. 
Oh, some nice iridescence and not bad condition. Doesn't look to have much of the less appealing forms of glass sickness, so I think I'll take it. Hmm, it's got a slight crack, so I think I'll still take it, but there's a fairly strong chance it won't survive the homeward trip. If it does break, it could be a candidate for Kintsugi treatment. Depends how well it cleans up. Mmm, the smell of wild garlic. We'll be foraging a lot of that in the next few weeks. Wild garlic pesto can be amazing. This is my usual access point. It's kind of a midway point. Old diggings on one side, new diggings on the other. We'll have a look around the base of it before climbing. Nothing much of interest at the bottom, just jars and broken things. Sorry if the filming isn't exactly smooth. It's steep, loose soil, not always the easiest climb. Ha, huh, looked like a plain old broken bottleneck from a distance, but up close it's a jar with a Bakelite screwing lid. Have found the lids before, but not an intact jar, so yes, I think I'll take it. Not at all sure what, if anything, I will do with it beyond cleaning it up. I put my finds down, my rucksack down, got my finds back out, and, as I have learned through experience to do, I moved my rucksack and had a look where it was. Wasn't expecting anything, this middle section is trampled flat and rarely has anything of interest, but this looks very much like a coin. Most likely a penny, circa 1900 to 1930s-ish, and probably too corroded to clean. It feels light, like a third of the weight of an old penny has gone. The old side first, that's older digging, not necessarily older finds. Although it does kind of look like somebody's had a bit of a dig recently there. I'll have a closer look soon, but first a wonder. Oh, something of interest. Looks like a glass rod, which may have been for stirring chemicals, or it might have been ingredients for bead making. Something I hope to give a go someday. And there's no obliging patch of sunlight for to see the glorious coloration, but if you watch mudlarking videos you'll know what cobalt blue glass looks like with light shining through it. Haven't seen many videos with people actually finding glass rods though. I've filmed finding them fairly often, but perhaps other YouTubing mudlarkers don't find them, or don't include them in the films because they don't find them interesting enough. That's a question, as well as supposition. A few YouTubing mudlarkers do watch my videos on occasion. Now, the thing that I thought looked interesting resolved into plain and dull. So down and round, marvelling along the way at the vibrancy of the plant life, full of spring, vim and vigour. Third degree. Just a bit of copper wire. And this, something that once was probably brass, taken for a hypothetical future video. Oh wow, that's almost certainly not a valuable jewel. Emerald green, set in rusty iron or steel. I know the back isn't see-through, I'm holding it up in the slim hope that light will shine through a bit of it. There, a flash of it. It is a lovely colour, not too sure if it was decorative, like a brooch, or perhaps a reflector for a bike. Any other ideas, anyone? Mm, none of these. That one, though. It's a simple hip flask style bottle, and probably very common. I've certainly found this shape of bottle many times, but I have not found this one before. A chartreuse green, and by that I mean the chartreuse green liqueur, not the slightly greenish yellow colour that is known as chartreuse. I'll take it. Well, can't exactly say I haven't found this colour before now, can I? Another of that particular green flask bottle. 
this is the way of things. I never find something until I do, and then I find it everywhere. I'm fully expecting to find a third one now. Midnight in Paris perfume bottle with the actual lid on. That's a rarity, but sadly a small chip out of a base, so I won't be taking it. That, though, looks like it might be to my taste. Some copper sheeting. It's cladding around a wooden fence post, maybe? If it was an actual then-used fence post, I'd think twice about taking it, but whatever it was, was well buried and has been in the ground for decades. Won't be taking everything in my pile. That bottle, I'm ambivalent about it. On the one hand, I really like the colour, and on the other, I don't think it's a very nice shape. I shall think on it before leaving or taking it. Spoon. They still make me smile, finding them. I have thought of doing a forge video where I melt down dumbfound spoons to make a spoon, a large serving spoon. But I don't think I can destroy these, even for a creation. It's not up there with book burning, but I have a similar innate resistance to it. Maybe some of the very, very broken spoons might be able to accept that. First little not to be taken of the day. Yes, it's a screw top, probably a Lysol or similar disinfectant. Lovely colour though, and I'm not feeling particularly picky today, so may well take it, we'll at least put it in the pile of things to maybe consider, and continue on with the search. Out to the edge of the pile to see what the rain might have cleaned the soil off. Nothing much, that's okay tiny little pill bottle. Another screw top possible. Think I'm just in the mood to disregard that common bias against screw top bottles. I like the colour, I like small bottles, I'll take it. I'll take that as well, a little bit of copper wire. That too, a decorated bit of brass that was probably part of a gas lamp wall mount. A bit of verdigris there, maybe copper, maybe brass. Just a strip of scrap metal, anyway. Anything else? No, not seeing anything. So that's this end of the dump site. Time to slowly, slowly went my way back to the start and beyond. If I find anything worth filming along the way, I will. There it is. Not exactly the same bottle, but the next sized up hip flask style. It is actually a really nice colour and I think I'll take them. That's no promise to keep them, but I will clean them up and see how they look on the windowsill with late afternoon light shining through. I've just found this, just a cheap perfume bottle, but a very art deco design. I'm not sure it's entirely to my taste, and I certainly don't know how I'm going to clean out the insides of it. Maybe I'll take it anyway though, for the puzzle of figuring out how to clean it without breaking it. I've really no other use for it. A wire. Back to the start, the middle, and onwards to the upstream end, where the more recent digging that I've seen on previous visits has been. Sorry about that, somebody's dead Christmas tree hitting the camera. Well, flip that, reverse it. It was me that walked into the tree. I see a little bit of brass. Think it might have been a pen. Cool, in the bag it goes. This, I think, is relatively new digging. Don't think I've seen it all before. Not that there's much of interest that I can see. Let's go in for a closer look. blue bottle up there. Ha, <laughs> look darker than milk of magnesia bottles usually look, maybe just because of the soil around it. Little bottle, small and intact, that's a maybe and a maybe not. And that over there is incredibly rare on an old dump site. Intact plates, three of them. They are so, so easy to break, so the fact that they've survived being dumped and buried and dug up is impressively long odds. 
I'm not sure if I can use this. I like the pattern and it would suit a planned project, but it's huge and heavy. Going to have to leave it, I think. Well, that's of interest to me. It's big and it's brass. I think it's a frame for a mirror, or half of one. The other half is there, with this tree limb in the way. Now, it's not particularly decorative, missing some of the beading from the outer edge. I can only see one of these hanging attachments, and this one looks corroded through. So that's a couple of kilograms of awkward scrap metal, which of course I'm going to take. Just having a look through this pile of metal, I spotted this nice copper wire, and there's a pottery thing down there too, a figurine. Red Jacket, is he a huntsman, a soldier, a circus ringmaster? Mm, no, I think he's styled like an 18th century gentleman, looking altogether more colourful than most costumes of the time would have been, so maybe a member of the royal court. Of course, he's missing a few bits, but I'll take him, and possibly give him some replacement limbs. The sun has made a welcome appearance. I can pretty much guarantee that, with the change in light, if I were to retrace my steps and search again, I'd find things I missed. But, nah, found plenty already, and there's plenty more of the site to search. That, seen it before, and I know it's only a thin skin of brass on a rusted iron bedstead, but I want it. I probably do have enough brass now for all of the smelting videos I've got ideas for, so it's not really an entirely healthy sort of want anymore. Should I continue taking it if I don't really need any more? Well, I'm certainly going to. The easy to extract and obviously unwanted. If I do run out of ideas for smelting videos, I'm sure you lovely people can suggest projects you might like to see me attempt. Ideas, suggestions, please. Not to be taken. I don't follow orders. I'm taking it. Clear glass though it might be, it's got a nice iridescence and it's one I don't already have. I do now. And there's an easy temptation. I don't think it would work trying to convince myself not to take such beautiful orange threads as this. Like a coated copper, and not very much by volume, but copper, whether I've personally got a use for it or not, still has good scrap value. As do pieces of pipe made of brass, and the insulated copper wire I can see. Now what's this glass thing? It's a lid off. Maybe a chemist's jar. A hole in the top suggests a pouring straw spout thing. Shame there's no sign of the jar. I'd have liked to find something like that. No idea what use it could be to me without the jar, but still might take it. Hmm, it's doll head colour. Think it's an eyebrow. Can't see any other bits of it. First clay pipe of the day. It's as white as white as I've ever seen on a pipe, at least for white bits are. The stained bits are rusty colour, and it's plain. And I'm trying not to take every pipe I find, but it's the only one so far today, so if I find no others... Just picking up fragments of what used to be copper wire, because I want to make a video sometime of refining verdigris back to pure copper. Don't know if it's one I'll ever get to do, but I hope so. Found that brown not to be taken bottle and another clear one too, but clunked the camera so much on branches getting them out. That'll be cut in the edit. Hmm. A dial? Something like a speedometer from a vintage motorcycle. Or, well, looks like it might have hung from something. Does not look like a pocket watch. I don't know. I can't see anything through the glass. Maybe I'll find out when I clean it up. Well, this doesn't look like much of a bottle, a mineral water maybe, Ramsden's of Halifax. I'm taking it because it's got the stopper still in it, and there's an audience member who's related to these Ramsden's of Halifax, and she might like this bottle. Nope. Plain. Source bottle. 
Milton's cleaning fluid. Nah, none of these. Vervo, some bluey green of third degree. Ah, it's brass wrapped around a rusty iron bar. Sometimes very easy to remove, but sometimes a sharp and perilous operation. And if it turns out to be the latter, I promise myself I will leave it. That is copper sheeting. Very thin, very light, but still copper. I see a ginger beer bottle. Can't imagine it's hold and been left, but stranger things do happen. Ah, no, quite a bit of it missing. Oh well. I hope it was broken during the dig and the missing pieces around here somewhere. That would be an easy fix, and I haven't found an intact one of these out in the wild. One day maybe, but I'd be quite happy with a kintsugi'd one. Not seeing the missing piece though, I'll put it on the pile and keep looking. Blue and white, not a great piece of pattern, and a swing arm for a wall mounted gas lamp. Quite a common find for me and this one is relatively plain, but on the pile it goes regardless. Ooh, that's exciting. A new, ish, bottle digger hole with a spoiled pile full of possibility. I accidentally filmed something very easily identifiable, part of the scenery which would help people locate this place. I'm not precious about the sites I know, but the business that sits on top of this dump site might suffer considerably if too many diggers find it, so I'll be editing that footage out. Is this... nah, not brass, not copper, possibly galvanised steel. Unusual to see it like this, but not really of use to me. A partial piece of a plate with an image of a bird. I think it's a golden pheasant. Lovely. I love pheasants. They're terrible at hiding and they run like little dinosaurs. Only ever seen one golden pheasant in the woods around here, many of a more common variety. A tiny bottle, pink inside. Something like makeup, I'd guess. Hope it's non toxic and easy to clean out, because I'm taking it. Might take it. Might also take this copper sheeting. Bottles beneath a rich seam of sadly quite boring looking jars. And this is going to take two hands to get it, but get it I will. There's a glorious green bottle poking out. Let's take a look. Oh wow, slightly tapered obelisk shaped poison bottle. Oh, it's screw top and doesn't say poison, poisonous or not to be taken. But it looks like it's in nice condition and I haven't seen one of these before in any of my dump site explorations. I'm kind of surprised the bottle digger left it. It was so very nearly completely buried that I guess maybe the bottle digger didn't ever actually see it. Bottle diggers watching, is this something most diggers would take? Or something most would leave because it's screw top? Me, I think, I'll happily take it. Little brass thing, I feel like I should know what this is, or was, but I can't currently bring an ID for it to mind. Anyone? Another not to be taken that somebody did not take. I guess some days I wouldn't take a plain glass poison either, but today I'm in the right mood too. And corner of the glass battery sticking out. Oh. Okay, that's actually probably in restorable condition, which makes it a firm yes, I'll take it. It's not for me to restore. There's plenty of people who want these to either restore or use the glass cases for stylish terrariums. I'll reserve this for the guy who once asked me to come back to this site and pick up a dry cell battery that I'd filmed so that he could restore it. Not sure this will be to his taste, but he's got first dibs on it. 
searched for that bit didn't think to look in the nettle patch. It must have been tossed there by a digger, the spoon. The right shape to be a World War I soldier's standard issue spoon, which means it might, under this verdigree, have a soldier's ID number or numbers stamped into the handle. There's something else further down. Looks like another spoon, missing a bit and not as interesting, a serving spoon. But still, I really like finding cutlery for some reason, and might have a maker's mark. Looks like there is something that some cleaning might reveal. Into the bag it goes, and onwards, on a mission to collect all the piles of stuff I've made. Looking as I go, of course, different angles, different routes through the site. Hopefully spot something good I haven't already spotted. I always come down to the river after I think I've found everything I'm going to find on this dump site to wash my hands to see if anything has rolled down the hill into the water and I've never before noticed that there looks to be a bit of a dump site on this side of the little river. It's much later, mostly plastic, but I still want to take a look. Might need both hands to climb this. Plastic seems to be mixed ages, 70s, 80s, but goes all the way to the modern, which probably means that this is illegal dumping. This is the most modern thing, and it's really quite sad, actually, that something like this would be dumped down a steep wooded hillside rather than donated to charity, or offered free on Facebook Marketplace or Freecycle. I think it probably is still in usable condition, even after tumbling all the way down here. Up there is a farm track, goes to a few farms, there's a car parking or car turning spot too. Guess it was chucked from somebody's car boot. Sadly don't think it's something I can get out of here today, I've already got some awkward shaped and quite heavy things to carry. Might come back another day for it. Right, now, got to figure out how to get back down again. Might be harder than the climb up, and that climb was a bit sketchy. Definitely going to need both hands. Just stopped on the drive back home on the top of this hill for to film the sunset. Now, a roundup time. I was actually a little surprised that day visiting a dump site that I thought may well have been picked clean of fines by other more local mudlarks and dug to death already. I had another site in mind for visiting that day and I was more hopeful for that one, but you've still got to check to make sure your guesses are correct and instead of it being played out, I found a fair amount of finds to my liking, enough that I could, and obviously just did, make a video. I did of course visit the other site too that day and filmed another video there, that'll be two or three videos away. That day was about a year ago now, and last week I did the very same wade and search for finds, and both sites are now ones that I consider dead. Well, dead for mudlarking filming purposes, possibly dead for bottle diggers too, very much alive for plant life and wildlife, and I'm perfectly okay with that. I mean, they were good sights. I found some nice things, shot some nice video, made some entertainment and relaxation content, and made some memories. And yes, there is a part of me that's sad at losing two places to film and find things in one day. But I got into this hobby to explore and find new places, and repeated visits to places that don't change much does make me feel a bit like I'm making the same videos over and over again, and that is not a good feeling for me. So hopefully it will motivate me to find some new places to film. 
Now for fines. Another nice piece of cobalt blue glass rod. I really do hope sometime soon to try making some beads from this stuff. I have a map gas torch now. I've just purchased some bead making mandrels and bead release. I don't really have a jeweler's bench or the right setup to make beads easily. I am probably going to have many failures and the beads will be quite fragile since it's old glass and I don't have a kiln to harden them once made, but I'm still planning on giving it a go. If I really like bead making, I can try getting all those things later. Bottles. Well, a lot of people don't take bottles if they're screw top or if they're plain colour, and that's fair enough. Some days I don't either. Some days I successfully resist bottles and come away with one or none. But that day I found the plain not to be taken as appealing, the small lysol shape not to be taken as appealing, and this obelisk shaped green poison bottle very appealing indeed, screw top though it may be mostly because it's one I hadn't seen before and partially because it's a glorious emerald green. I have since found another one and took that as well, so now I have two. These bottles, an olive green colour maybe? They're not a shape I usually take, but I don't often encounter the colour and I liked it on the day. Still do kind of like them, with light shining through them. I don't know which, if any of the other ones, I shall keep over a long term. The glass battery, I have offered it to the gentleman who took a dry cell battery I found and restored it, along with two other dry cell batteries. I know I could strip it out and sell it for a terrarium, or leave as is and sell it to someone to restore, but I'm just happy to offer it to somebody I've met who might appreciate the project. Back down this end of things. This fine dandyish gentleman isn't really to my taste for figurine augmentation, at least not at the moment, so he'll go into a box of potentials for if and when inspiration strikes. One of these spoons is the right shape to be a standard English Army issue soldier's spoon circa World War I, but it doesn't have a soldier's ID number stamped into it. Still, I enjoy finding spoons, and the idea of melting down some of the more broken ones to make a large serving spoon is growing on me. I'm pretty sure the green jewel thing is glass, and I guess it might have been a reflector, or part of some cheap costume jewellery. No idea what I might do with it. Quite a reasonable amount of copper and brass, and yes, I did say in the film that I probably have enough copper and brass for all my plant smelting projects. Really I do, which means I need more ideas. I do not wish to make endless smelting videos of making the same few things over and over, so please suggest things, outlandish, silly things that might be hard to figure out how to do but may well look amazing cast in brass or bronze or copper, because I'm not going to stop taking copper and brass I find in the wild. It's got value for sculpture, or if I absolutely run out of ideas, as scrap. For anyone wondering, yes, I did take the two halves of a mirror frame, but they're too big and unwieldy to fit into this roundup display. And part of a copper sheet I found didn't really notice when I was pulling it out. It's very thickly plated with gold. Now, thick electroplating is still relatively very thin, and there's probably less than half a gram of gold there. Not enough to get excited about, but it's still enough to separate from my other copper, and maybe try to separate the gold from it some day, when I have enough goldy type things to make a video. That's for fine, so I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I do greatly appreciate every expression of appreciation or its antonym that flows my way, whether that be by just watching my videos, pressing the like button or the dislike button, the subscribe button and the bell icon, writing a comment, replying to somebody else's comment, sharing a link to my videos on another platform, it all helps. Should I dispense with all of that? It's gotten quite long. I could just say something simple like, thanks for everything. It started because I didn't and don't want to ask for things. Oh, I've asked for ideas and suggestions and IDs on finds, information and engagement, but I don't ask for you to subscribe, I don't ask for likes or donations, I just express my gratitude. Speaking of which, a big thank you to all of the kind people who have donated through Ko-fi, Super Chats during premieres, Super Thanks on video pages and purchases from my Amazon wishlists. Should I slim that down too? What do you reckon? I hope that you're all keeping well, looking after yourselves and loved ones as best you can, and finally thank you all very much for watching, and for now, goodbye.